Good morning, everyone. Can we gather around uh, so we can start worship our God? Um, you know, I was thinking for the last two weeks that we all are different. We look differently. We like different things. We have different gifts and talents, but we have one thing in common. It's our Father in heaven. He loves us. He gave us purpose. He gave us name. And he also is always with us. Sometimes we go through struggles, anxieties. We don't know what to do. And instead of talking to our Heavenly Father, we go to our friends and family to talk to them first. We forget that God is available 24 seven. You know, he never sleeps. And Jesus said in Matthew 11, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you have any heaviness in your heart, go to your father first and pray. And if you don't know how to pray, Jesus left us the perfect prayer. Beth, could you please read? Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And do not let us yield from temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you... Is that... What is wrong? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> if you if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to give other, forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, don't make it obvious. Do th as the hypocrites do. Oh, oh. I can't. Okay, let's start singing for the glory of our God. He's our God. He's our Father. Never forget that. He's always with us. He's always here. He gave us blessings. He guides us. He protects us. He's almighty. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's everything. Hear our prayer. We are your children and we gather here today. We've gathered here to pray. Hear our cry. Lord, we need your mercy and we need your grace today. Hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Who have 
our Father. <coughs> we love you. We love you so much. You are in our hearts and souls. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never failed me. All my days I've been held The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so. goodness of God. 
faithful please give us the hunger of your word so we can read it and it will guide us throughout our life because your word is a lamp for our feet and a light on our path please create the hunger so read your word daily because it's alive and it can change the lives amen, amen. amen. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. Come with open heart, oh 
changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith handed down to this age came to He's almighty. He's our Father, but He's almighty God. He's powerful. Every knee will bow at His name. He's holy. We give Him glory. Thank you, Father, for being with us.
Wasn't that a beautiful time of worship before God? We've got some wonderful worship leads were, were leaders that we are blessed with in the church. So that was just a beautiful time, time of worship. And as, uh, as Bethany was reading the, the Lord's Prayer, I was just mindful of how that we are, we belong to him. Uh, we, we belong to God and he loves us. And we make a lot of mistakes, don't we, as we go through life and we mess up sometimes, but do you know, the Bible says there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, and we can just come to him. If our hearts so are right, right and that we want, we want to do right by the Lord, then he forgives us, doesn't it? We don't have to carry um, condemnation around with us because uh, he died once and for all for us. Amen. I mentioned just a few notices so on wednesday the house group will be at christine's again that's half past seven on wednesday evening you're welcome we we had the 12 on wednesday it was like the, the 12 disciples so it was beautiful wonderful wonderful time of fellowship i don't know if we can squeeze any more in christine <laughs> Um, so you're very welcome to join us, and it, it really has been a blessed time. Um, so you're welcome. That's uh, Wednesday, 7.30 at Christine's home. Beautiful, beautiful home. So 
on Good Friday, we're going to have a communion service. If you came last year, um, it will be like a service with some worship and taking communion and prayer and just celebrating what Jesus did for us uh, together. And that will be from 10 until 12 on Good Friday, which is not this Friday. It's, is it the next Friday? Yeah, week on Friday, we will have a Good Friday service. So please do pop in at any time between 10 and 12 that, that you're able to come. You don't have to stay for the whole whole two hours uh, just to take communion um, with us as a church. Amen. We've got the Easter service coming on the 31st of March, comes early this year. Um, so we're getting ready for that and we're hope we're believing that um, we're going to get people coming in. So let's invite people for the Easter service and, and get people to come into the house of God and experience um, the, the Spirit of God in, in the church. Amen. So we're going to take uh, the offering now. So please, oh. Okay, so the worship team, if, if we could meet at 12.30. Just, just in the, the sanctuary. Thereabouts, we're going to going to meet briefly. Let's take the the offering now with a little bit of a, uh, of music. Um, let's bless God as we bring, um, our gifts to Him, our offering to Him. Amen. The king of love be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life. Oh, Jesus, yes, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Thank you, Father God. Just We just thank you for the this day that you've given us, Lord, and thank you for the offerings that have been brought forward this morning. In Jesus' name, I just pray for your blessing upon each one of us this, this week, Lord God. Amen. So I'm going to invite Kate to come and share with us the family time. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Now, it's going to be a bit different this morning. Children, families, I want to invite everyone to come forward as much as they possibly can this morning because I have a word for you. Not just the children, but for the church. I believe God gave me a dream during the week and the more I thought about it concerning my own life and the life of Christians, I thought, well, God, you're trying to say something here. So if everyone can come and sit down, and I would like to invite you to, I want to use the words of Jesus, and he said, those who have an ear to hear, let them hear. But not just hear, 
here with an intention of doing something about it. Okay, so I believe that this is a prophetic dream from the Lord for the church today. And I'm just going to explain the dream I had. Hey, guys, come on. It's so exciting. God's got something to say to us today. Who's listening? Uh, who's listening? Anyone? Wow, wow, wow. Awesome. So can you hear me, boys and girls? Yeah? In my dream, I was out in like a garden in nature. Hello. And I suddenly became aware of a snake. Have you ever seen a snake? Yeah, what color was it? Yellow, what color was yours? Did you see one? What color? Brown. My snake was different. This snake was the colors of the rainbow. And I thought, whoa, I've never seen a snake with the colors of the rainbow before. Okay, thank you very much, Isaac. Has anybody else ever seen a snake the colors of the rainbow? No, I was really intrigued. And then that snake came and slithered up my body, sat on my shoulder, curled itself up and made itself really comfortable. And I began to feel, feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I suddenly realized that this beautiful looking snake was not here to bless me. It was here to cause trouble. It wanted to whisper lies into my ear, just like the enemy wants to whisper lies into your ears. But why? It looked good. It came in God's colours, but it was not of God. It come disguised as good, but intend not intending good. If I listen to the lies of the enemy, it's dangerous. Can we say dangerous? Who knows it's dangerous to listen to people we don't know. Yeah? Is it is it dangerous to listen to people we don't know? No. Yes. It is. It is. Okay. Suddenly I knew something I needed to do was to remove this snake from me. So I took it by the back of the neck, hallelujah, and threw it away from me. Now, when I looked at that snake again, it was no longer rainbow colours, the colours of God's promises, how it had come disguised. It was red, showing its true identity. It had come not to bless, but to harm. So what is the meaning of this dream? Oh, hold on a minute. Okie dokie. Right, what the photocopy machine's done upstairs is photocopy the same sheet twice. Hold on. I've got another one. Here we go. Thank goodness. I believe God is reminding us that we have a real enemy. The same enemy that tricked Eve and Adam in the garden. The same enemy that tempted Jesus by challenging his identity as the son of God and his sovereignty in the desert before he went into full-time ministry. And you can read about that in Matthew 4, chapter 10. This enemy, Satan, the devil, also has a plan to stop God's children, that's you and I, from discovering our true identity. So many people in the world today don't know who they are. They don't know why they're here. That's because they don't know God. Because God put his DNA in every one of us. He put a blueprint inside of you so that you would do good works. It says so in Ephesians. We were created for good. How will the enemy do this? Tell lies. Well, we can see. All right, darling. We can see how when we look at his true identity, John 10.10, 10, he comes to steal, to kill and destroy the works of God, God's people. He'll go for God's people first. 
One of the ways he'll do this is by sending people into your lives that have come not for good, but for bad. They call them, Jesus called them false prophets because they've come with the intention of spreading false truth, false teaching, whispering lies to you about the things of God, getting you to believe. I believe some of the most powerful words that Satan can speak to us is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I stay home today and don't go to work. My boss has got other people working for him. It doesn't matter if I don't go to church today. There's someone else in the team that can step in for me. It doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter if I've got news, it matters. Because God is looking for those he can send out into the field that is ready for harvest. Yeah. The good news is this, guys. Good news. Can everyone say good news? God has given, good girl, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. It says so in James 2, sorry, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And you can read that for yourself. And if you want a copy of this, by the way, just come to me and I'll get you one. I'll go and do it properly the second time. He has given us words of warning and encouragement in Matthew 7, chapters 15 to 23. And I'm going to read that now because it is extremely important that you understand that what I'm saying is not a load of rubbish. It's straight from the word of God. Watch out. This is Jesus speaking. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. Inwardly, <laughs> they are ferocious wolves. So they come in sheep's clothing, lovely little sheep. Pat them, pat them. And they'll turn around and bite you. Not everybody is who they seem to be. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus... By their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many of you will say on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? So they can even prophesy these people and drive out demons, perform miracles. Jesus says, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Get away from me, you evildoers. How do we stand against the devil's schemes? We do exactly what Jesus did. Get away from me, you evildoers. God's word of truth will protect us. So here's what I want you to do this week, boys and girls, mums and dads. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. If you want to grow, if you want to grow. What do we do? Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Let's sing it together. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Ready? If you want to grow, if you want to grow. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Guys, if you want a copy of this, um, I will go and photocopy some uh, before we leave today. It's no surprise to me when I look out today to see half of the church full. Because the enemy is real and he's at work saying, it doesn't matter. What are you going to say this week? It does matter. 
It does matter. It does matter how your neighbor's feeling. It does matter that you ask them how they are. It does matter that you feed the poor. It does matter that you bring good news to the weary. It matters that you pray for the sick. Yeah? But most of all, it matters that you read the Bible and pray every day because that's where the truth is. And that's where the enemy's lies are exposed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is good. Some of the time. Just checking. Oh, praise God. I've just had on my heart um, for this morning um, that God wants us to be immersed, immersed in, in him. We're, we're his children. Um, we belong to him. And God wants us to be living in the fullness of life in, in him. Do you know, I was thinking it's so easy in this day and age, isn't it, to put other things. Aren't there a lot of things these days that, that we can so easily put before God? Do you know, technology is always grabbing our attention, isn't it? These, the, the phones that, that we carry with us. I've had to, I've decided to install, uninstall Facebook because there's just too many distractions from the phone. And God wants us to be living in him, um, in constant communion with him. And so my title for the message this morning is Immersed in Christ. Immersed in in Christ, that might remind you of baptism. Um, and it is, and that is what the baptism of Christ is all about, that we are immersed in, in God. Our old life has gone, um, our new life is in, immersed in, in Christ. So I wanted to read that from Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. This is the great, the great commission that, that Jesus gave um, to the disciples before, before he departed this earth. And it's not going to be so long before he, he comes back. We don't know the day, do we? Only the Father knows the day, but it's like we're in the 11th in the, the 11th hour, and, and it matters, as Kate was just sharing, every connection that we have, every friend that we have, um, we need to be communicating uh, Jesus. And Jesus has gave us the great commission. Matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 to 20, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on, on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And that, as you know, 
if you've been baptized, that word baptizo um, was used in the Greeks to signify the dyeing of a cloth. Um, or the drawing of water by dipping one vessel into, into another. And Jesus was saying that we need uh, to get people baptized into, into him. And Luke chapter 3 and verses 15 to 16. Luke chapter 3, three verses 15 to 16. John acknowledged that the baptism that believers have is being immersed into, into God. Luke chapter 3, verses 15 and 16 says, As the people, this is when John was baptizing um, before Christ began his ministry. John, was, John the Baptist was preparing, preparing the, the way for the Lord. And he had a powerful, powerful ministry. And people would ask him, what, what should we do in response to, to what you are saying? Uh, he was communicating that the, the Christ um, was about to come. Verse 15, now as the people were in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not. But John answered, saying to all, Indeed, I baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the, the baptism of John was symbolic of what, of the baptism of Christ. Um, Jesus calls us to be immersed in him. Our lives are meant to be immersed in him. And he said, didn't he, um, from the scripture in, in Matthew, he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So if he's with us always to the end of the age, he's with us. If he says he's with us, he really is with us. He's available to us, and we need to immerse, we, to become immersed in Christ. Not in video games and phones. and We can become immersed in these things, can't we? Putting them before God. But what is available to us is so much more abundant life um, that, that we can immerse ourselves in, in Christ. And he, is, he said he is with us even to the end of the age. So I wanted to share some thoughts about being immersed in Christ this, this morning. So first, first aspect is that we're, we're intended, when we give our lives to God, we're intended to be productive. We're intended to be productive. So I'm going to keep referring back to Matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 to 20. We are intended to be productive. Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. I went to a, uh, the Hope for Peterborough. Um, it's like a just a get-together of the churches in P Peterborough that happens uh, several times a year. And there was one person who, ha who had a vision of Christ. He was, he was sharing. And Christ was, he had his arms like this, looking down at us, looking down at the earth. His arms were like this, and he was holding back the angels. And that, that spoke to very much of how that we are in the last days. 
Um, we went to a conference recently, and this was part of the MFFG uh, fellowship that we're a, a part of. And we were hearing um, that we really are living in, in the last days. The enemy is at work to deceive us, um, but God is, is, is moving uh, in, in these days. And we are intended to be productive in these days. The time is drawing close when, when Christ will, will come again. So I was thinking, I was speaking to some people um, in the Hope for Peter, Peterborough gathering, and they're looking to train up people to be productive, because we don't always know how, do we? And so I'm hoping, I'm going to share with the leaders about it, that we're going to get somebody to come in and just help us to become makers of disciples. Because isn't that what Jesus said? He said, go therefore and make disciples. It's all, it's all very well to convert somebody, but if they drift away, then we're not being productive, are we? We're just, we're trying to be obedient, but um, that can so easily be lost in these, these times of where people can put their time and attention elsewhere. So I'm hoping that those that want to can be trained up in being how to be productive in reaching souls for Christ and just helping them to become uh, disciples, making them disciples. So the, watch this space because we do need to be productive. We're intended to be. And I know those, there are many that have got that heart to be sharing Christ um, so that watch this space because we we're, we're hoping to to bring training, and they will actually get, take us onto the street, uh, go with us just to sh help us to do it in real in real time uh, and experiencing how to to reach people. I don't know if you're excited about that because I'm quite excited, and I know others are are too. So. Yeah, we want to be practical and give people op opportunity to, to, be, to be trained up, um, to be productive for, for Christ. And I was reminded of the scripture in Acts chapter 17 and verses 16 to 17. This is where Paul was on his, his journeys. He went on several missionary trips, didn't he, to the, the Gentile Nations, and he found himself in Athens. And I think, well, no, that the conference, that the MFG conference is going to be in Athens. I think we've got one person who's going. So this is when, so you will see this place, hopefully when you go. Um, Paul found himself in, in Athens, and it was a godless place. And it grieved Paul's soul that there were so many false gods um, that people were, were worshipping. And in Acts chapter 17, verses 16 and 17, says, Now while Paul waited for, for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols, these things that keep distracting us. Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. So this was like street evangelism AD 51. Apparently it was AD 51. I checked. Um, he, he was grieved in his heart that they were not experiencing the true God and worshipping the true God. And so he was talking to them, reasoning with them daily in the marketplace while he waited for the boat, I guess. I'm not sure what he was waiting for. Um, 
So Matthew chapter 25 and verses 14 to 18. Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 18. I'm just going to read one or two verses. Uh, this is talking about the need for us to be productive and, and God and um, he, he gave a parable of a man uh, the kingdom of heaven being like a man in verse 14 traveling to a far country who called his own servants and he de delivered delivered his resources to them and so he gave one of his one of his servants five talents one of his servants two talents and they made double the amount and he was he was pleased and he said to them well done good and faithful servant so they were faithful but there was one who was given one just one talent but he buried it he didn't do anything with it he wasn't productive and you know what the master said he said take that the one talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents okay it was probably ten five and one i can't remember sorry and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth this is the parable that jesus that Jesus gave about the importance of being productive. Because if our hearts are immersed in Christ, we want to do his will, don't we? We want to, to do, we want others to receive what we have received. And if we're not willing to do that, and we're lazy and greedy, then he's talking about hell. When he said, cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's talking about hell. He was given resources, but he was lazy and distracted. Do you know, we're meant to be productive. We've been given wonderful privileges and we're, meant, we're intended to do, meant to do something with it. Amen. And in Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 4 Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 but just reading verse 1 of Hebrews 2 says therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have, we have heard lest we drift away lest we drift away so we need to give earnest attention um, to the things that we have we've heard from the Lord lest we begin to drift away Do you know if we're not doing something with what we've been given then don't we tend to drift we naturally drift away if we're not being productive if we're not using what God has, has given us and the Bible says if we neglect if we neglect our salvation, how are we going to escape consequences? How are we going to escape consequences if we neglect our salvation? So we're intended to be productive in, in Christ. Talking about being Im immersed in, in Christ, in his presence, doing his his works as we've received his uh, resources amen but the second area is that again this is looking back at matthew chapter 28 the great commission we are the rightful property of god you know we don't belong to ourselves we we are owned thank goodness we are owned by god we are the rightful property 
of God. So Matthew chapter 28 again, again still verse 19. So he said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. But then he said, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So he said, baptize them into the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit of the Godhead. So that indicates that the people that are being baptized or the person being baptized is closely bound to. When it's talking about into the name, it indicates that the person that be, is being baptized is closely bound to or becomes the property of the one into whose name he was being baptized. And that this is the baptism of Christ. We're immer immersed into Christ, into the, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, we belong to him as we become immersed, immersed in, in Christ. But you know, we were created to be his children, as Kate was, was sharing. We were created to be his children. His children, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, this is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. So our is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit according to our likeness. And let them have power, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. So that word image, it is from the Hebrew selem. Selem, which is a copy or a counterpart, a copy or a counterpart. So God said, let us make man as our, our counterpart. We are created to, to be an extension, an extension of God, a counterpart. And that, that's a good, that's a good, um, description of that word image um, and if you look at have a look at the dictionary for counterpart it it can mean several things it can mean one of two corresponding copies of a legal instrument a duplicate and we are we are children of god we belong to to him it also means a thing that fits another perfectly something that completes, complements. Also, something that is remarkably similar to another. This, this is talking about us being made in the image of God. One having the same function or characteristics as another. So we, we are made in the image of God. We are we are like an extension of God. We, we do the works of God and we belong to him. We are, we are his children. And you know, our lives are meant to be bound up. Our lives are meant to be bound up with God, with Christ Jesus. So when you enter into baptism, 
it's not a light thing that you can just walk away from. It's it's not to be entered into to light into lightly, because it's speaking of total immersion and our lives being bound up uh, in the life of Christ. And so we're meant to become immersed. And if we've drifted away, well, let's drift back. Why don't we come back into who, who we really are in these days? Because Jesus is coming again. He is coming again and, and we belong to God. We are his instruments. We are his counterpart in, in this world. And he gives us his res resources. And we belong to we belong to him. So we, we're meant to be immersed into Christ. Const, constantly in, in Christ. And God keeps rebu rebuking me, reminding me and rebuking me when I've kind of let other things get in the way. Um. You know, we need to be thinking and immersed in Christ, otherwise we miss what he wants to do. Amen. And we should remain immersed. We should remain immersed in God. You know, because we can't be productive if we're like those Grecians, if we're constantly putting other things before God. Um, then we can't be productive for God. So we should remain immersed in him. I'm not saying we can't enjoy. You know, there, there are times of just re enjoying, but still immersed in Christ, still listening. Uh, we belong to him. We're, we should glorify him and putting him always first and always having that listening ear um, for what God wants to say say to us. So we're intended to be productive. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. We belong to God. The third aspect is we, we need to be in fervent communion with the Lord in fervent communication or fellowship, fervent communion with the Lord. So going back to Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission again, in verse 20, Matthew chapter, 8, chapter 28, verse 20, it says, so we're to make disciples of all men, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And then he says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I was reminded as well of Luke chapter 22. This is the Lord, how the Lord feels about, about us, about fellowship um, with us. Luke chapter 22 and verses 15 and 16. He said, Luke chapter 22 verses 15 and 16. He said to the disciples, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So that's how Jesus feel, feels about us. He desires to be in fellowship with us, to commune with us, so we need to reciprocate, don't we? And we need to be in fervent communication with, with God. You know, we should fervently desire to pray. Fervently desire to be praying. Not, 
not as an afterthought at the end of the day. And I'm having to relearn the importance of prayer because we can drift. We don't always mean to. Um, but this life can, if we're not careful and we're looking down, this life can, can get to you, can really affect you, can't it? But isn't, that's not what we're called to. We're called to look up and, and to experience the fullness uh, of God. So we should fervently desire to pray. Why? Because he said, he is with us always. So when we sit down to pray, he's with us. And as, as we do that from the heart, you, you feel the spirit. I mean, not just once in a blue moon. You sit down in your, your prayer chair and you feel the spirit of Christ because he is, he is with us always even to the end of the, the age. and So we need to be in fervent prayer, times of prayer and fellowship, waiting, waiting upon the Lord. Do you know, James chapter 5 and verse 16. J James chapter 5 verse 16. This is what um, the Bible says about prayer and what it, what it achieves. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, Confess your trespasses to one another. So that's important that if we've got a problem with a brother, we have to put it right, don't we? If we have a difficulty, we need to put that right. We, we need to confess our, our trespasses to one another, uh, forgiving one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And then it says, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. It's very valid. Prayer is so valuable. And the more you pray, the more you become immersed in the things of, of God. We don't always see the spiritual realm, do we? But the more you pray, the more you see the more your eyes are opened um, to the spiritual world, which is the permanent one, it's the everlasting one, um, this world is going to pass. We need to be in fervent communion. We need to prioritize praying. We need to pri that needs to be a priority in our lives, uh, not just a few minutes, but we need to set apart time um, to pray. As, as Je if Jesus needed to do that, then we certainly do, don't we? Prioritize communion with the Lord because he desires that. And it makes a difference. It, it avails much. Doesn't actually say what, but it's all good stuff. It is all good stuff. And you know, if, we, if you're going to pray in a prayer that lasts longer than two minutes, we need to learn to pray in the Spirit because we don't always know what to pray. When we've prayed what we know that we want to pray, we can't come to a halt, don't we? But the Spirit knows what we ought to be praying, what we ought to be asking. So I encourage you to, if you, if you can't speak, if you haven't broken into praying in the Spirit, um, I just encourage you to desire that gift. If you desire it, if you want it, you will you will. You will experience it. You, you, if you desire it enough, it's just going to come. It's just going to come out as you take steps of faith. And I tell you what, praying in the Spirit is so powerful. And you can keep going. You don't. The Holy Spirit does not run out of stuff to pray about. Um. So I'm learning Spanish, and I was sharing this with Anthony Reese 
fairly recently, um, that I began to recognize some Spanish words in what I was praying in tongues. This was all coming out automatic. And there was one which, it was coming out of Espiritu Santo. And it means, uh, oh, sorry, I'm not gonna remember it now, but the, the translation was, he is, he is, oh, it's Eres Santo, Eres Santo. And so I did a little quick translate and it was, he is holy. He is holy. So I don't know why I told you, that's not in my notes to tell you that, but I'm, I'm just trying to convey that it's powerful. Um, the spirit intercedes for us about the things that we, we need to pray that are necessary. So I encourage you to, you know, just to desire. If you just desire the gift, then you, you will break into it. And we're always willing to obviously help you with, with breaking into that. I, I did want to share about, um, so when I became Christian, first became Christian, um, was at university. And so I think it was the year the year before I became Christian, yeah, that's right, would have been um, probably 79 or 8, 1979, I think. And we had this old caravan, and so I had some college friends, and we were going to the North, North Yorkshire Wars, or the Yorkshire Dales, I think it was. We took this caravan, hitched it onto a, a Ford Cortina, and I don't think we attached it <laughs> and this is before i was i was born again but so yeah i remember looking at the back of this ford cortina and this caravan was just going backwards and yeah so there was some constant this was like um on the main road so it was like 60 60 plus miles an hour uh, and this caravan was good. But it, it, was, it was just moving so gracefully backwards. And so I was returned round. But the caravan, I mean, you would think there was going to be a horrible accident. It would start rolling because it was an old caravan with a, a dodgy um, chassis. Um, it was not a new thing. And it just gracefully parked itself at the side of the road and we were able to drive back hitch it back on properly and thought no more about it but you know then the following year I became Christian and I, we're kind of you know what a family home is like it's difficult to pray and that caravan became my like my prayer closet I spent so many hours praying in there and that was really important it was really important for me. So God knew. And so then there were angels. I tell you, there were angels making sure that caravan did not yeah. take a Slurry. fatal <laughs> tumble. So God wants us to pray. He wants us to pray to him. And I was thinking, you know, one of these days we're going to get so into prayer we're going to pray all the way through the night. I mean, different ones at different hours. Um, we're going to do this for those that w the, those that want to, and it will achieve it will achieve amazing, amazing things. Amazing things will happen, and that's what we want, isn't it? Amen. So, just in closing, going back to these. Athens again. Don't know if you've got that photo. Yeah, it really does matter what we put first. It matters what we what we put first. We need to put God first in everything. This is this is the Apostle Paul. Um, this is the oh, Are, Areopagus. The Areopagus. I think it's the Acropolis behind. So. The, the Areopagus was like a, just a mountain. I'm sure you will see it, uh, Megan, when you go. 
And that's the Acropolis behind. That's the Apostle Paul talking to these chaps from Athens. It says, then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, or the things that we put first, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, the one that they'd missed. Therefore, the one that you worship without knowing, him I now proclaim to you. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with man, men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood, from Adam, from one blood, every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and he has determined their pre-appointed times. So we're meant to be here. We are meant to be here. This is our pre-appointed time. And the boundaries of their dwellings, so we're meant to be here in Whittlesea, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us, as he said. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So amen, that is my message um, for this morning. We're intended to be productive. We belong to God. We're not our own. We belong to God. Hallelujah for that. We're, we're meant to be in fervent, heartfelt communion with the Lord. So I just encourage you this morning, let's live and move and have our being in him and really be immersed in, in God. You know, that is what God wants. It's abundant life it is abundant life and that is our inheritance in god we are his children and we're meant to be with with him now amen let's pray thank you father god we just thank you that your desire is that we would your fervent desire is that we would have fellowship with you lord that we would enter into you in fully into you, Lord God, and remain in you. And I just pray that each one of us would desire that, Lord God, that we desire to be productive, Lord God, that we would desire, we would remember that we belong to you, not to this world, not to ourselves, but to you. And Lord, you want us to, to be in close fellowship with you. And I just pray for each one of us here this morning and those that are watching, Lord God, that we would desire to be with you and experience it and praying with you to you, Lord God. Lord, that would that your will would be done, Lord God, in our midst. In in this locality, Lord God, that you called us to serve you in. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Well, let's have a time of fellowship together now. Um, don't forget the house group. We're having wonderful times in that house group. We'll squeeze in somehow. If there's any more that would like to, to come, you're welcome to join us and see you then. Or if not, have a brilliant week and blessed week and see you next week. Amen.